you get the original page. All right, so enough chatter, let's draw. So we have her, I might start her lower on the page actually, since she is like all hair. I am gonna use markers, like I said, for just one more week and then I'm gonna switch it up. I know a lot of people were stressing. A lot of people bought some, which is why I'm gonna go ahead and do it for one more week because I don't want you to like have gone through all that effort and then not use them. If you hate markers, don't use them. Just, you can feel free to try this in watercolor. You can try it in acrylics. The medium is not the focal point for this at the very beginning faces that we're gonna do. It's really just how to draw one. So I'm gonna make <clears throat> this. Normally I start with an oval today. I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm approaching it in because I'm following this chin shape. So there's two approaches. Well, there's a lot of approaches to drawing faces. One is, and this is what we did last week. We started with the oval and then we kind of fine tuned it as we went. Another approach that I like to take is by, especially if I'm using a reference, I always start at the chin. Okay. Cause you can see the chin is like a point at the bottom and then it's like a V. So sometimes that in, for some reason in my head resonates with me and it's easy to remember. So sometimes if I really am trying to follow something, you know, more or less correctly, I will start at that vantage point and then work my way up from there. And yes, of course, you can always start with the oval as well. So it's just another way. Now I'm looking and I think this face is too wide. So remember, just start in pencil and erase. If you have to erase 50 million freaking times, who cares? Erase freaking 80 million times. It doesn't matter. No one's watching you. And then I like this, <clears throat> this like change of direction at the jawline, I think is really strong and powerful. And then the hair is gonna come down like this. So remember with hair, this would be the top of my oval and the hair always comes and I have a ton of tutorials on hair. I think I have a whole playlist for it. Um, comes down inside the oval and then there's always volume up and over the top of the oval shape as well. So make sure you do that. Um, if also if YouTube is like an intimidating place, I don't know about you guys. I live on YouTube just as a observer as well. And I get lost in the bowels of YouTube. So if you want, if you're trying to like, oh, you know, I go back to some of my older videos and they, oh, she said she had some hair ones. Um, if you go to awesome art school, you can actually, I have a YouTube library that you can sign up for and it just gives you access to all of my videos ever. There's almost 300 videos, I think, and I've organized them by genre. So it's like drawings, mixed media girls, like funny animals. And so you can kind of find your way and you won't get lost. So just throwing it out there. It's, it's totally free. Um, okay, so we have the hair whooshing up. So I had the kind of part. So again, this would have been my regular, my, this would have been my oval, just to be clear. And then to start the hair, I'm gonna pick a part on the top of the oval. I'm gonna coming down across the front of the face. I'm coming down across this side of the face. And then to create the volume, I'm gonna start at that, like uh, this change in direction. And I'm gonna plume up. And then I'm gonna start down here in her neck and I'm gonna plume up this way. I'm just making a nice casual wavy line and we'll deal with the rest later. So let's move on to the features of the face. Um, the eyes are halfway, so I'm gonna find the halfway point between the top of my circle and the chin. And I'm gonna draw a light horizontal line and that's where her eyes are gonna go. Dividing that up again, it's gonna be her nose. And then again is gonna be her mouth. And I'm looking at the picture Let's see, mine's much bigger. <clears throat> and you know what, just so you know, like do not, when you're drawing from references, do not beat yourself up if something is not perfect. It's actually, in my opinion, way better to not, you know, you don't, I don't want to rip this artist off. So if you're off on some parts and you know it, good, keep it that way. Cause that just means you're doing your own thing. So it also takes all the pressure off of trying to be perfect and like, oh, I can't get this right. It doesn't look exactly the same. Like good, now it's yours and not theirs. So all the more power to you. 
All right, let's get these eyes drawn. So she, we have three across, and if you wanna drop that vertical, you can. That just goes right down the center. <clears throat> so hers, she looks like she has a little bit wider. Hers are much more realistic portions. I'm looking at it, so we did whimsical last week. And if you remember, that's really three in a row and you don't have a lot of room on the either sides. In a realistic, you it's is like five equal sides, five equal lengths, I'm sorry. And the eyes are in spots, kind of two and four. So she has more proportions of that than the whimsical when you have larger eyes with the, with the same size spot in the middle. So, what I'm gonna do is, and she has more of um, like a Asian inspiration to her, so I'm gonna do some smaller ovals. And I'm just gonna spread it out because I feel like they're a little bit farther apart. And let me, let me know guys if you want like a link to this <clears throat> picture, I can, I'm sure I could set it up so you guys could grab that as a reference if you wanted to. So I'm going to zoom in first so you can see. So I'm gonna drop this slant first and I'm kind of looking back overall and seeing, I think that might be too far apart in the middle. Yeah, so I'm gonna move them closer and I'm talking about this space. Remember, you never want them to be like too close. If you're gonna err on the side of erring, go go. You, it is better to go further apart than closer together. But I think that they move need to move a little bit together. So I'm dropping in those kind of hard diagonals, and then I'm gonna come right down pretty quickly. And then the bottom, she has like a sharp return. Oh, and I also have to say, if you are using a reference, it's I personally find it way easier to reference off of someone else's art interpretation than a photograph, just because there's so many distracting things in a photograph. Um, and like all of a sudden you have this pressure to like be real. And in this, I just have the pressure to like make something cool. It's already not real. But again, it's not cool to rip off an artist, so make sure when you do, if you are practicing and you're using someone else's reference, give them a nod, you know, just say thanks so-and-so for the inspiration. And then also try to make it your own in some way, shape, or form. So today we're gonna be changing this up a ton because we're using different mediums. And yeah, so let's do it. All right, so she's a very small eyelid, very small. So I'm gonna make that very small. And I am gonna go over this with my Sharpie. <clears throat> I remember we talked about the iris last week. If you have your eye, the iris always needs to be kind of chopped off, right? You want this to be cut off and you want this to be cut off as well. So you're only, you're only looking at the leftovers, so to speak. In this eye, it looks like you're mostly seeing <clears throat> the way that this artist has it depicted is like, <clears throat> excuse me, is like a little bit on the bottom is chopped off and then most of the part that's getting cut off is the top. So you're only seeing this. Does that make sense? So it's like most of a circle on the bottom and then again, the top lid is cutting off of the larger proportion of the iris. So when we go over here to draw that, <clears throat> excuse me, if you feel more comfortable, like, you know, you can use a, like a, what's it called? A template if you want to. But I'm gonna have it sit, say here. You can even draw the whole circle, if that's helpful. And then try to draw the same shape on the other side. And they're not the best size shapes, but I can make it work. I'm a big fan of the expression, good enough, <laughs> good enough, <laughs> move on. <laughs> oh, I try not to get too caught up in all the details. I'm not a detail person and I'm okay with that. All right, so good enough. 
This one, though, looks like it's canted off to the side, so she looks like she's staring in a different direction, and that is actually not cool. That's a different level of good enough that I'm not comfortable with, so she, I need to move her pupil over a little bit. It was, like, too far to the right. So that is important. Make sure they're at least looking in the right direction. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And then she has these really, like, cool eyebrows that just go straight. So that I'm just going to move up a space. And then we're just going to come. They're really thin and sort of, I'm going to say expressionless. Well, for eyebrows, they are. I very rarely end to have them just being straight across. But she does have a very overall expression for sure when she's done. And part of that will be her eyelashes, which again, and I'm just going to pencil them in here. I think this is so cool <clears throat> is they actually go, this is very heavy lidded with makeup. It's like a darker line, which I'll do in pen or, or Sharpie. But then the eyelashes are going to come, they really come down, which is so neat. And then the makeup is going to come up like this. And I'm going to do that in with the Sharpie. So this is a real thick line. And then there's like some makeup line after that. So it's so neat because that's very different. Some of these, I think, come right across like that. And the same with this. We're going to have like a line of makeup coming out. And then the line, and then the, sh the lashes, sorry, I can't think of the word, are going to come down which I think is super neat. So fun. We'll see how it <laughs> looks in Sharpie. Maybe it's not going to lend itself to this, but you know what? Every time I do something, you just jump in and you take away something. Let's just talk about real eyelash, not real eyelashes, but like sort of more typical eyelashes. <clears throat> is you're going to have, and usually there's like a double line at the bottom. Sorry, I'm trying to rush. So we're not here all day. So we have like our tear ducts. It's usually like a two, two lines. And usually the way the eyelashes go, because I know people struggle with this is, is really like a, I usually come down before I swoop up. So there's like a downward, I come down following this direction of the eye. I come down before I come up. I come down before I come up. So there's like a swoop, right? And it's kind of like the same as when I draw hair or even if you draw grass, when you're drawing things that are growing, I always start in where the place that like they're planted, so to speak. So if I was drawing grass, I would start always start at the roots and draw up like this. Sorry, I'm getting a really bad, bad shadow today. Sorry about that. So, so it's the same thing with the eyelashes. I am starting where they grow and then drawing my line. And I'm gonna fix my lighting so it's not so shadowy, because it really is. Is that better? <clears throat> Let me make a few adjustments. All right, I rearranged a few things. I, get, I don't get all, hardly any natural light in my studio, so sometimes it's hard because I'm dealing with just um, fluorescent. Okay, so yeah, come down and down. And then the same thing where on the bottom lashes, I kind of come up towards the corner of the eye first before then launching to the side. And I'm starting again, I always start at the roots and then do a little flick. And like my pencil like comes up like it comes off so it's like presses down at the root and then it flicks up up and off the paper to so get these little flicks you can practice going in a different direction so it's a real like big movement and then when you hit the mid section of the eyeball and only here is when the directionality of the of the eyelashes come straight so it's like this is the only straight one and then on this side they're going to curve this way and then when you hit the midpoint then they start changing directions and they come the other way now i don't recommend i don't normally draw sort of like these ones <laughs> but you can so again once they hit the midpoint they're going to go up and down and then as soon as i go this way they're going to start 
coming in the other direction. And it's good to vary the lengths. And of course it depends entirely too on what your medium is. I mean, what you do in graphite is gonna be different than what you do in marker. You're not gonna put in so many lines. And when you see that mixed media video, you'll see how I make them um, kind of my like mixed media style, which is my favorite. All right, let's move on to the nose. And I lost my reference. No, where did my reference go? There it is, okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna move away from the eyes for a minute and let's go to the nose. And my neighbors are having their yard. I gotta shut my window. Oh, so high maintenance today. No, my neighbors have their landscapers here and it's so noisy. I tried to shut my windows, okay, which is so sad. It's like the most beautiful day out right now. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna try my best to ignore it. All right, so the nose. I'm gonna again start with the ball of the nose. And then today, I'm gonna try to change it up too every time I teach so you guys can maybe learn, take some new takeaways. So today I'm gonna to just um, underline the bottom of this nose and then I'm gonna make like a, what I don't know what the shape is, triangle, like a wide triangle. And that's gonna be filled in. And then we're gonna just make like a, broad parentheses, not even, actually, I'm not even gonna go up very much. It's almost like I'm underlining. These are a little bit large. So make those nostrils really quite small. Okay, oops. And, you know, make friends with your eraser. It's, it's there to help you out, okay? And then this is gonna be a little shady region. And then we have our lips. I think my nose might not be centered. Oh well, <laughs> good enough. See, see how useful that is? Good enough. All right, so the lips on her are quite large. I'm actually going to, I mean, I'm gonna start with the top lips. I'm gonna make like a, a very, I'm gonna say mild swish. I'm not sure that's correct language, but you can watch this wide, gentle swoop. How's that? And then we're gonna come up top and come up top here. And then I'm gonna come down. She has a very wide, lovely mouth. Do, do, do. And then this kind of turns up. Now I'm, I'm noticing right now that she has quite a lot of space between her mouth oops, and her chin. And her chin. You see this space right here? And see when you go to mine, how it's so close. So I have two choices. I can fix her jaw or I can adjust her mouth. Um, I think I'm gonna adjust her jaw because I like the proportions of everything else. I think that's more or less kind of what I had started with and I brought it in. So if I just make this little adjustment, and again, if you guys need to erase, like don't feel shame if you have to make a change. It's not the big, it's not a big deal. You know, we're not all perfect. I wasn't born perfect. And I make adjustments with every drawing and just kind of go slow and steady. And even if it was too close to the cheek, like who cares? This is just fun. Not a big deal. Okay. So we have our little mouth and she has this cute little like upturny thing at the end, like boop, boop, like such a subtle little boop. And then I'm gonna draw the bottom of the top mouth. Her lips are open. And by the way, I don't draw teeth, so don't ask me. Teeth are evil in my opinion. Okay, so I'm making that, this is the bottom of the top lip. And then I'm just gonna join forces with this and this, connect these up too. And I'm onto the bottom one. She's a very lish, lish, luscious bottom lip. This kind of just goes almost straight across. And then I'm gonna come down to set the thickness. Again, her chin is gonna be tiny. I might end up having to move that again, but whatever, whatever, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna do the bottom of the bottom lip, make a line like that, and then I'm gonna connect these up too. And again, I am choosing to follow this reference. You can choose to follow me or you can go and do your own thing too. I, you take away from this, whatever you like. And now her chin is way too small for me. 
So I'm going to change that yet again. And remind yourself, whatever, it's all good. Oh, there we go. Now I have the appropriate space between her mouth and her chin. And now her neck is all suddenly way too skinny. Do you see how that's crazy skinny? So I'm going to move her neck up to hear more. And if this was a realistic neck, honestly, it would be like, it's almost as wide as like the ear. Next in real life, not whimsical or, you know, and you can even like, like we did last week, like add some directionality to this if you would like to. It doesn't have to be straight up and down either. I think you could, I could even make that even bigger if I wanted to. She does have an ear on this side. I think last week I said they were stupid. And I, I do, do think they're stupid. All right, so I think we're almost ready for Sharpie time. Is that even possible? Yes, yes, I think it is. All right, so when I get to the hair, we can do some fun things. We can do like individual strands. Again, do you notice that when I'm drawing the hair, I always start back where it comes out of her head, right? Just like the grass, just like the eyelashes. It's the same thing with hair. I kind of start at the beginning. So it's weird because she has some pieces going down and then the rest is going up very anti-gravity <laughs> and I'm gonna start coloring her in with the sharpies I might make her all I'm trying to think if I should make her all fine and I am gonna grab some colored pencils today too I got some new ones in the mail thank you Amazon and see if I can maybe I'll go all with the thin sharpie we'll see what happens <clears throat> all right Let's do this. We're gonna, I'm going to start with the eyebrows first. They're very skinny. And I don't typically draw my eyebrows like this. If I'm not working in marker, I tend to be like a different artist with every medium that I use. I, my things sort of come out the same. So I wonder if that always holds true for you guys too. So I'm just going to darken in this top lash line and there is um this is a lot of makeup is on here it's actually hard to see because it all because this was done in watercolor and I'm doing a different medium altogether so I'm not going to be able to capture this exact look but I'm going to try come back to me all right and this is like her skinny lid line zoom in so everybody can see And then, yeah, it's really so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna do my mark. I'll do my lashes last. And she also, the way the artist has done it as like a lost, she doesn't outline the whole iris. It's like black, black, and then it kind of like fades away, which is super cool. And the pupils don't have highlights in them. The highlights are on the iris on this one. That's kind of pretty neat. And then this one really, really gets cut off. And then she has eyeliner on the bottom. And then it kind of fades like that. And then we'll do our lashes last. And then I'm going to come over and do this one. And I think this black part is going to end up even being more pronounced when we go to add the lashes. So stay tuned for, oops, changes on that. That might very well change and again it's hard to see oh see this one she's like a cat eye so maybe i'll do that one on the other side too sorry i'm gonna add the cat eye on this one and that mixed media free class that is actually shows you two ways it has um it has a cat eye and like regular lashes kind of mixed media style that's using like stabilos and acrylic and all sorts of other yummy things that I love. So I'm gonna have that little 
baby eyelid and then this comes like that and then again we're gonna have the lashes go last so she's more or less symmetrical that's a little wonky but we're gonna put some like heavy makeup on her anyway so whatever good enough <laughs> I'm going to darken in her, her little nostrils here, Boop. and then just a little bit of under the nose, and then the mouth, oh my stupid iPad locked, knock it off iPad, we got work to do, seriously, slacker, alright, and this is going to get really pronounced, this is also, I like using references. It's like you kind of pick up these little things from other artists, right? It's like, oh, she does these really pronounced, or I don't know who even who knows. I wonder if I can find out who did this. And it doesn't say. I would absolutely. And like when I post this, I'll say like, you know, inspired by Pinterest. And unfortunately, a lot of these links get lost, which is not good. I don't even know if this is gonna be symmetrical. It's not, look at, see this one's like up and wonky and that one's like wider, but like, you know what, dudes, I'm moving on with my life, whatever. Good enough, that's my mantra. Actually, my mantra is have as much fun as humanly possible while doing art, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Boop, boop, all right, she's looking good. Now I might put in some like, I'm so torn. I never know if I should go with my big fat Sharpie or just keep it all thin. Maybe I'll keep it all thin today. So I'm going to do some of these like deliberate ones that come down across her face. And then we'll have the swoosh going back. Very confusing. Very confusing. Don't know how I'm going to end up coloring this, but I'll figure it out. I've debated doing this live. I think that would be really funny. Let's see if I can keep it serious. <laughs> Although I think if I went live, it would be so confusing because I'd want to be talking to you guys and it's really hard to talk and draw at the same time. I think I'm gonna have to maybe draw her mouth. The outline in the pen, I probably will have to do that. So the way that I love to do hair and marker is I always like have to really have to split it up into parts. Otherwise it like takes me 8,000 years. So I think I will just do the same. So I'm just breaking it up into sections just for ease. And I probably, I can see myself going to my larger Sharpie for the hair just to divide it up a little bit more easily But like do whatever you want. This is where again you get creative like Do what works for you You might look at this and be like what in the hell is she doing? I'm gonna do this and I'd be like yes bring it sister. I want to see your style Yeah, like this right there is like super awful <laughs> So I'm gonna color her in and then I'll probably go back with my fat Sharpie and maybe go over some other lines. But right now I will erase these extraneous ones. We need to. And now since there isn't really color on this, all right, I get to make up my own colors, which is fun. All right, such a nerd. I like always do green eyes. I just love them. Just do. Sorry, I'm not sorry. All right, so, oh, let me look at her eye one more time. See if I can get last minute inspired. See what that artist did. No, they just look really cool and awesome. <laughs> Do my best. So I'm gonna make these little spokes coming out of them. The artist does do a good job of doing like darker at the top and then it kind of like fades to light at the bottom. So I might even just leave it like that, like leave it uncolored. And of course, what's cool about alcohol markers is that you can layer them like paints. 
this is a lighter color. But you have to work with markers kind of the same way you work with watercolors. It's like you have to do light to dark and it's the reverse in like acrylics and pretty much anything else where you have to go where you can put white on top of something dark. You can't really work like that with Copics. Although you can always go back with your paint pen, which I do often. All right, let's do some darker skin tones today. It's also another reason I wanted to do another marker one is because I don't think you, you know, people come in all different shades. So let's do one of darker shades. So all I do when I'm doing darker shades is, because people ask me this all the time too. So if you put these in order of like light to dark, if you were doing like a light skin Caucasian woman or man, you would just grab these markers right here, right? And if you're doing a, a medium, these are in, sorry, these are not in the right order. We do, I would use these. And if I'm doing like a medium shaded person, I would just like, go down the scale and maybe use these, right? And then if I'm going a little bit darker, I would use these. And if I was doing the darkest, I would use these. It's as simple as that. I think for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe no one else is teaching this. Like, I don't, I, I don't know why. I don't know why that's so hard, but it's actually just as easy as that. So just go down your value scale. And it's the same thing if you're working in graphite or if you're working with paint, it doesn't actually matter what the medium that you're working with. You have your value scale and you're just gonna move down the scale the darker you get or lighter or up the scale if you're going lighter and that's it. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna do something medium. I do find that doing real dark, dark skin, not um, that's like acrylic, um, it's actually just hard to photograph, I found. I did a really beautiful dark skinned woman in my Mixed Media Magic book, and it was fantastic to do, and I loved it, but I was getting a picture was wicked hard. It was so interesting. I'm like, what is going on? Other than that, it, you know, it works exactly the same for any skin colors that you use. All right, so I'm gonna start with the lightest one and then I'm gonna get darker. And I also wanted to do another marker face today to kind of like, we didn't add very dramatic shading last time and I kind of want to do a little bit better job at being dramatic. So again, with markers, you really need to move quickly so you don't get those streaks. It stays wet for a period of time, just like paint does. And then when the alcohol in them evaporates, like it kind of soaks into the paper and blends. And that's why I do not use Copics or alcohol markers on watercolor paper. They will absorb all of your the juice from your marker. It will like eat it up. So I would do not, you can do it. There's no laws that says you can't, but you will, it will trash your markers like Nobody's business. Um, I think people were talking about different brands. I use a, totally tons and tons of different brands. I must have like eight different brands. I, everybody makes, you know, makes them. It's it's not so much the rent. Copics are my favorite, but I actually do like them because they're also refillable. So it's expensive at first, but if you run out, you can actually buy one of the refills last. Um, I think refills a Copic like three and a half times. It's like a lot of times. So um, I have had to do that and it's so it actually in the long run becomes refillable. Spectrum Noir, I believe are also refillable. Um, and some brands are and some brands aren't, but that's fine. Someone in the Facebook group was mentioning like, oh, I, you know, kept buying cheap brands to put off, to put off buying the expensive ones and then, you know, by the time you get around to it, you realize that the expensive ones are better. And I do think that Copics are superior. Um, but like this one is super nice, this artist marker. But maybe it'll run out like tomorrow and then I'll be like, ah, darn it, I should have brought my Copics. So don't run out and buy and Copics. Like if you have any any brand of alcohol marker will, be, will do fine. Um, they are quite different than like Crayola markers. Uh, I think the Crayola markers are actually water soluble, which is more like a Tombow or an Equaline um, or a brush marker. So that's a different beast and I will absolutely be doing, I will definitely be doing girls in water soluble because that's like yummo. 
one of my favorites. All right, so I'm just letting that dry. It's really cold, so that's how I know that she's like still wet. This will like, as it continues to dry, it will get less streaky, but then we're also gonna do more layers on her anyways, so. I am okay with streaky, and I'm gonna jump into the second layer right now. I don't think this drawing actually has any shading on it. It's like white. Yeah, it really doesn't. All it has is like a little bit over here and then her neck and the rest is not. So I'm gonna actually grab my the shading guy that I'm giving out and show you how to use that. All right, grabbed my book. All right, so this is from my first book. The second one does. The first book is just the front facing. The second book is three quarter portraits and profiles. So this is page 55 and this is what you can download if you go to that link in the description box. All right, so we need to pick one. I think I'm gonna do this one today because that's different. We sort of did this-ish version um, the first day. So I'm gonna do this one. It's the only one without an arrow because it's really like the light is coming like directly on your face, so it's perfectly symmetrical. This one is kind of like the shading I did yesterday where there's a little bit on this side and then it's mostly on this side. So, just want to give you kind of your bearings here. Oh. Okay, so if you want to be really subtle, you can take the same color that we just did and do all your shading in that second color. Or you can get daring is what I'm going to do. Mwah. Okay. And there's always little shadows like along the hairline. So I'm going to do that first. So I'm just using that second color. Oop. Stupid ear. Now you need to make sure, oh, as I say that, I do like a really bad job, that your this line doesn't get too beefy because then it looks like she has a beard. So go really subtle with that. Kind of quickly, like kind of fade it out. And then under her neck, it's under her chin, it's all gonna be dark in here. I do, my favorite way to shade is by having it more pronounced on one side than the other. But I just wanna show you different ways that you can, you know, literally like, what does it mean to have a shading guide? Well, it can be quite useful. Especially if you start feeling like your girls all look the same. Cause I know I'm guilty of that. Like I love, I have my favorite way that I love to shade and I do them all the same. Well then my girls all start looking the same and that's no fun. So it's a great, another option of a way to, you know, spice up your drawings. Okay, so then you have, and I'm just making sure I'm not deviating too much from, just make sure I'm not going over anything that I shouldn't be. Nope, she's good. All right, so we're gonna have this. And the, this is essentially the bridge of the nose is created by the shadows that you draw. Oh, I can't wait to do her eyelashes. It's gonna be so fun. Okay, so you can do this. And this can stay highlighted. And what I think I'm gonna do is I will show you later how to add highlights on after we kind of bury them under the marker. I'll show you how to bring that back. And you can cut in for some like sharp uh, cheekbones too. This is always nice and dark under the nose. There's always shadow here and then it usually also there and then so if we're doing a symmetrical shadow then this side has to look also the same if I was doing it my favorite way this is how I would do it I would probably leave it more like this where one side is very dramatic and the other side is just a hint and then the neck would only have this on one side that's like my favorite way to do it but 
I'm going to make it pretend the light source is really beaming straight on so there's like no mistake. And you can have fun playing with the nose also in terms of shading. And it's cool, it's really cool to see different artists, um, how they handle like the nose bridge. I love, love, love looking at the differences in that. And you can really control like the shape of the nose. It's very cool. And just remember that like it's getting darker because I'm doing I'm doing more and more layers. So just keep that in mind. Every time you run over a certain place, it's gonna get darker. It's so weird how cold <laughs> my paper is so cold. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. If we're going to add more drama, we are going to switch colors. Now this might be a really big leap. This is sort of a kind of like a too broad jump between colors. So I'm going to maybe try to find one. And by that, I mean that's the next layer down, which is like, that might be going a little bit too far. So I'm, what I'm saying is the leap between this and this is all the way there, which I think is like too dark. So I need to find like a happy medium to that. So let me go see. All right, this is Copic Pale Sepia. So I'm gonna do like a third pass. And this is like a very, you know, specific style and you might not care for this. In which case, again, just use the medium of your choice. And next week I'm going to move away. I'm not doing Copics. I'm not doing alcohol markers next week. I'm going to do something else. So. But I would be remiss if I didn't include these in the, my, the repertoire of the challenge. So I'm putting this in the deepest recesses of the darkest shadows. It is also a really good lesson for shading using alcohol markers because there's it's such like a unique and powerful look. And again, if this transition between the darks and the lights is too much. All you have to do is go back to your lightest color and you can really blend them out quite a bit. Just like paint. I'm kind of working on the seams between the lightest and the darkest.
And if you want to make her more dramatically shaded, then go ahead and do darker, darker, darker lines, you know? Like, do it! Don't even hesitate. Drama is awesome. Let's get some hair rocking. I'm gonna probably fast forward that because this video is gonna be like 9,000 hours long if not. So I'm gonna do some hair. colored the hair, some fun colors, and then I'm just going to add some colored pencil to kind of make her lips have a little bit more direction. So I'm going to put some, this is just a magenta Prismacolor, and this is bothering me. I need to like segue better between, I guess those would be her teeth. We could see one tooth. Like outlining her lips. <laughs> the big tooth in the middle. Might be too much. <laughs> Maybe let's soften it with some erase. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, so I'm gonna just put some like curved lines. These are kind of like the eyelashes where it's not even really showing up very well. where you're just p putting them like in the direction of the lippy. You can also layer it with that same color again. Just like, so they're not like flat. Last week's they were flat. And then, ooh, I just got this box of, I'm obsessed with Derwent pencils. So I have like so many kinds and now I have even more. These are just Derwent drawing pencils. I've actually never used these until right now. I don't even know if this is gonna, shade will work. It's much darker, but if you wanna add extra shading and also like a different textural look, you can add colored pencils to your Copic drawings. All right, now someone in one of the Facebook groups was mentioning that their Copics don't last long, um, you know, because they're using it in mixed media work. I would definitely, I love my Copics, as you can probably tell. I use them, I like to teach with them. I, However, and mixed media is definitely like my thing. I would not recommend using them for mixed media work. They work great by themselves and they work great under, you know, colored pencils and pen. They don't really work well with others. They're kind of like babies. You need to baby them a little bit. They don't like to get, you know, they don't like to get wet. The watercolor paper will really destroy them very quickly. Again, there's no rules in art. So yes, of course you can do any of those things, but I'm just sharing with you that I would not recommend it because you will really quickly destroy them. And with the price of Copics being what they are, holy moly, that like hurts my bank account kind of so much. So you can add some fun extra shading details though. On top of, color pencils work great on, on top of Copics. But like other than that, I wouldn't marry them with, with many other products. I just don't. They kind of need to have their own space to behave and to breathe. 
I do mention that in my mixed media book. I'm like, there are a number of products that I own. I think it's a direct quote from a book. There are a number of products that I own and love and use, but not in my mixed media projects. And alcohol markers are like top on that list. It's just, you can kind of just like run into too much trouble too fast. And it also like your markers just will like, they'll just, they just get destroyed. This is a cool color. I like these Derwents. I've never used them before. I like them because the, um, the lead on these is really fat. It's like a thick. And they tend to be very heavy handed and uh, I don't have great detail skills. So I like that they're fat. <laughs> All right, so now we can also add some, we can add those eyelashes. It's taking so long. Let me just see. I think she has some cool eye eyeliner kind of things that I want to make sure I do before. Oh yeah, she has some sort of extra color on her. I wonder what color she'd be wearing. She's like a sweep makeup on. Maybe I'll do that in like gray. I'm too scared to add color, just add gray. Kind of like boop. Gives it some extra dimension. You can even add it for even more drama shading too. Apparently. You have too much shading? Mm, I don't know. I don't feel like you can't. <laughs> the gray looks good in there. I like that. Oh yeah. Girlfriend, you smoking hot? And then boop, we're gonna add a little shading on the nose. While we're in here. Ooh, see, this is what I like. It's like you just pick something up and you're like, I feel like using this. And then you do, and then you're like, it's like this could go either way. This could be, work out really, really well. Or it'd be a really, really bad idea. But sometimes you just gotta try it. I just need to know. And then sometimes it's like, oh, that looks awesome. And sometimes not so much. <laughs> but then you know. All right, so let's do those downturned eyelashes. And yes, I always save eyes for last. I'm the worst. I like love it so much. <gasps> do I want to do anything else? Actually, before I do that, no, I guess I like that. Well, sorry, now I'm just completely talking to myself. I do want to add a little shading to the top. I'm taking the same gray and it's natural gray number four in case you're wondering. And I am going to drag it on the top, across the top. Her eye. Ooh! She is looking fierce! I feel like she needs like a dab of this, like her lip pink, right here, and there. Ooh, love her! Her hair needs a little work. It's like she has so much dimension in her face, and then her hair is super flat, so I might have to have some more fun with that. So, alright, so let's get these like downturned eyelashes going. Ooh, I don't know if this will go on top of all the pencil and everything. Oh, it seems to be working. So there's the top, and then I think she has like a bottom row too. Ooh. It's kind of neat. It's, she's a little hairy, it's a little hairy looking. But that's also, you know why? Because in the picture, this is like all the wing goes way down, so I'm gonna actually make that one even fatter, so there's like barely any eye sticking out. Oh, I love it. Yes. So again, this goes like way down. You could even leave it like that and not even have 
the eyelash is coming down, but it's kind of so neat. I have to try. I have to do at least one picture. I've never done this before where we do that. Oh, so fun. So fun. <laughs> All right. Now I need to fix her hair. Maybe add some highlights. So cool. And I think I need to outline her mouth. Also, it's kind of bothering me the pencil. Like I want it to be as thick, kind of, it's a, like doesn't match the rest of her face, if you will. It's just more like an Ill illustrative choice. You don't have to do this. Well, you don't really have to do any of it, I guess. Come to think of it. But I do like these little, how these corners are like specifically darkened in. I need to fix her hair. Her hair is lame. All right, I'm gonna put some music on. You can listen amongst yourselves. I'm gonna add some white highlights and be done with it. All right, her hair is super annoying me, so I'm gonna ignore it for a minute. And then maybe just add some Wait, highlights with the pen. Boop, 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 boop. Sometimes you just do a ball of the nose to like emphasize its noseness. <laughs> and same thing with the chin, where you can like scrubble it this way. Scrubble. It's an official, official art word, scrubble. And then I feel like she needs like a little bit of a some sort of an eye you know glint in there and when you do kind of the eye shine just make sure they match on either side you want them to be exactly the same I don't know how to make her hair not suck I actually really hate it hmm. but you know what I don't hate her freaking eyes, they look awesome. I'm really happy about the way that they look. So that's cool, tried something new and liked it. So, just fixing some of the shading here. Deep and darkening it a little bit. Maybe there's like more hairs coming down. Mm -hmm. A little drama on that side. I love her face. I hate her. I might actually cut her hair off and like do a different hairstyle. I'm gonna do it. It's driving me nuts. Some scissors out. Okay, so, <laughs> see, this is the best part about being a mixed media artist, right? Like, the, anything's game. Like, anything is possible at any time. And I'm taking full advantage of that. So I chop, I cut out her head, and I went and I sprayed her with Craft Bond, and I'm just freaking glued her in a new book. Boom. Now, actually, I don't think I have ever used this pad before. This is mixed media paper, which I much prefer watercolor paper, but... I don't even know where this pad came from. But this is vellum surface, so I'm intrigued because it's actually super smooth. This would actually be fine for your Copics, I bet, too, because it um, doesn't feel very even absorbent. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had, to start, I had to start over. Her hair was, like, not doing. Now, I have to obviously, like, make something happen here so it makes <laughs> sense. But I'm going to start over. I'm, I, whatever. Things happen. Nobody's perfect. Woo! Maybe this will just go whoosh down. This. Okay, so there's her part. She's so boring now that she's like 
been cut out though. Maybe she should have like a side bun. Can we do a side bun? Can we do that? We can do whatever we want, people. This is awesome art school. It's awesome. Maybe there's like a bun. This is fun! I should cut the faces out more projects. Like it's kind of neat here. Fresh start. Huh. Who knew? And maybe this like trails off a little bit. Did you see how I'm starting again from the part up and over? This is going to have to be some sort of, you know, sharpied tendril. Obviously, but maybe that can match that one and yeah, I feel like I feel like she needs a side bun. But see how much volume comes up and off of her head? That is that is true. That will happen. Maybe we'll watercolor her bun and then like sharpie some tendrils. I might do my sharpies first because I don't trust myself to, I won't be able to like bring myself to sharpie over a watercolor. So we have this, whoop. I wish that wasn't so fat because it would look better if, you know, it wasn't so fat. <laughs> oh, what do I get myself into here? All right, where is this even coming from? It needs to come here and then it needs to like be like, oh, I purposefully came from there. Look at that. There's something to be said for like faking confidence. It's just a little disjointed. It's all right. <laughs> You're gonna figure this out. Whoop. I think it's also really good to see that like, <laughs> don't give up. Just keep doing, just keep working until you get it the way you want it. Just go for it. Just try not to care. Honest to God, that's my biggest secret in life is just pretend you don't care and then it's all good. That, now that's like too fat, but whatever. And then I feel like this is very uneven. She needs like more tendrils. But then like her shape of her face is gonna come here. Oh, maybe that's what I need to do, more like sketchy lines. Like, oh, sketchy. Oh, yeah, that, that might work. And then boop, boop, and then here's her like side bun. Blah, 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 that's better. And then maybe like have some like sketchy lines here. So you're like, oh, I meant to do that. That like thing right here with her face. Like, yeah, I meant to do that the whole time. All right, let's get some watercolors up in here. Let's see if we can move on. Look at that. Little gave her a new life. Poor thing. I'm not sure that's, that's, See what happened when I went from the like, oh, that style to the loosey goosey style. They don't even match, but we'll somehow marry them together. Just, just do it. All right, let's get some watercolors. All right, so I was like, la da da, I'm gonna spend all afternoon. I have to pick up my <laughs> my kids from school in 15 minutes, which means whoop, I'm switching gears yet again. I was gonna do watercolor and every time. I'm actually gonna best out my watercolor markers <laughs> because it'll be so much faster than doing it. <laughs> um, not with watercolor markers, to be honest. I'm doing this sheerly for speed. Okay, so this is, what color is this? Have you guys tried these Winsor Newton watercolor markers? They're freaking amazing. They're like super saturated. Super duper duper saturated, like yummy. So yummy. So when you are in a rush and you have three children to pick up from school and you have to do a speed project, you get these guys out. Now, I have not used them on this paper. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is very much an experiment. This is Speed Draw Session 101. All right, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and activate these because <laughs> I gotta go. 
Okay. I don't know how these work on this paper again. I haven't used these yet. This is weird paper. It's kind of like, ooh, that's weird. It's kind of like hot press, but like it's activating. It's very strange, actually. So watercolor markers, if you haven't used them before, um, they come, all different sorts of people make these. Tombos are my favorite. These are my second favorite. Um, but they're, they have a really <laughs> fat nib, so I knew I could go like really quickly and make this happen. So I'm leaving these highlighted regions just for, you know, artistic kicks. Um, and tried to make it dark at the roots and at the places where it's like tucked in together. I'm gonna do a second layer because it's not as like juicy and dark as I wanted that to be. So I'm gonna, ooh, there's another color. All right, I'm gonna dry this real quick and then go back with this color. Wish I could explain to you this paper. It's fascinating. It is just like hot press. It's like smooth. Interesting, what color is this? Okay, this is a third different color. Scribble, scribble have to go to carpool. <laughs> my kids don't have busing, so I have to get them every day. And my husband's in China, so usually he drops them off in the morning, but lucky me, I get to pick them up and drop them off from school this week, which is fine. But not when you've made it like a giant disaster and you need to fix it. And I love these markers because you can, you know, activate them or, or you can not activate them, right? You could not activate them. That might be cooler. Or maybe I'll just do it one more time and then. Ooh, this is so pretty. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so guys, the big takeaway here, I think, for today is, and this does happen to me all the time, like if you're running into a disaster situation, just like see if you can fix it. Like, don't give up. Just kind of keep going. Like, What's the worst that could have happened? I could have just, it, like this could have been another disaster. And then I could have cut her head out again and put it in another sheet of paper and tried another hairstyle. And maybe that would have been a disaster. Just like keep trying stuff, right? That's the only way you're gonna learn is just do it. Just try it. What's, I mean, if, if this didn't, if they could not get it together all day long, what, again, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Not Nothing, really. I would just get up and try again tomorrow. Oh my God, I love the swoosh. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna dry one more time. All right, and I do have to confess, now her lips bother me because they're, oh, that's really, oh, you know, I just realized that's the Bristol paper. Whoops. So now, oh, and I thought, <laughs> so, okay, so now I need to actually color these in. See, I'm messing up right before your eyes. <laughs> but you just say whatever and you keep going. That's hilarious. In my head, I was on the mixed media paper and I was using a watercolor marker, but in the reality that I am living, cause I'm just rushing like a mad person right now, I am, <laughs> I'm using a water, an alcohol based marker on my cardstock that I love. So yeah, now I'm all confused. Okay, so I'm gonna quick, quick draw that in. Actually, I love that better than what she had rocking before because that was like a terrible choice. And this is, this is the last marker that I just used before I like activated it. And I think I'm not gonna activate this layer. I'm just gonna let it live on in its solid state. Scribble art, we call this. One of my favorite art forms. And yeah. Woo! Girlfriend, she went through some serious transformations. Um, where's my white? Where's my white? I have to go to the school. Ah! Alright, so I have a white china marker. Because these work on everything. Again, if you're gonna be an artist, be a mixed media one, cause then like, anything is possible. And you can, now my battery's about to die. 
but you can go in and put highlights pretty much wherever you want. China marker, although this one is dirty, so don't do that. And yeah, you can add highlights as needed. I have to go to school to, to pick up my children, so I'm gonna call this one a day. I hope you had fun. Holy moly, this prompt was a hilarious adventure. Maybe fill in that a little bit. And yeah, I hope you had fun with the eyes. I hope you tried that out with the, like the downward facing lashes. I think that was really neat. Just gonna add like a little bit more mottled there. So, so, so cool. I'm definitely doing the eyelash thing again. That is for sure. I hope you enjoyed um, the craziness that was this project. I hope you got some things to take away. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a laugh. And I hope that you'll join me next week for the next installment of Fun Fab Faces 100 Challenge. Seriously. Oh, I see now see if I had given up I would never have fallen in love with her all right you guys have an awesome week I will see you next week and we will definitely be doing more work with water soluble yumminess I will see you there please post all your pictures in the Facebook group and if you post on Instagram yay Instagram let's follow each other you follow me I'll follow you and I'm just at Karen Campbell artist and that's the same for this YouTube channel that's my Facebook page and that's my Instagram as well. So don't forget to download those PDFs if you want, the shading guide. And if you wanna pick up that free mixed media eyes class, um, you can grab that at any time as well. And all the links for all this stuff and the paper I'm using and the markers that I use will all be in the description box below the video. Okay, bye guys.